Hello everyone, welcome to the Peanut Gallery. I'm your host, Jessa, and I'm fascinated by analyzing mood, personality, and general mental disorders with comic book and movie characters. You'll find all those strange thoughts shared right here. Note, I am not a licensed psychologist, nor am I trained. This is for entertainment purposes only, and to satisfy my hypomanic mood to talk. Again, I'm commonly going to reiterate this throughout all the episodes. I am not a licensed nor trained psychologist. This is for entertainment purposes only, so I do hope you enjoy the episodes. Welcome to the first episode of the Peanut Gallery. Um, today I'm going to take a stab at analyzing James Buchanan, Bucky Barnes, aka or also known as the Winter Soldier. The reason why I chose him is because he actually has a lot more than just one disorder. He's a fascinating character and my personal favorite, well, you know, followed by Frank Castle. Tortured souls take as much love as they can get. Since I've chosen Bucky, we're going to talk about one main point that I've noticed, mainly from the films. I haven't really delved into the comic book history of him yet, and I know that that's probably really, really big for all you comic book people out there, and I'm going to apologize now that I don't know much about comic books as far as the characters go, but I'm really willing to actually read the Wikipedia and if you have any comments pertaining to that, feel free to, you know, send them. I'll read them, respond to them. But, um, what I've noticed from the films is that he absolutely abhors the Winter Soldier part of him. The part that made him the Force or the Fist of Hydra, he detests it. And always sees himself as a danger to other people, especially Steve Rogers, even though he can take care of himself. But Steve's a different story. He doesn't want to hurt his friend. And I think that's why Bucky sees himself as a complete danger to everybody around him. Whether in a public place or somewhere safe. He prefers solitude because of that. Um, I'll probably end up crossing other disorders that Bucky has, such as depression, possibly bipolar disorder, even post-traumatic stress disorder, and anxiety. But right now, I want to start off with something that probably few people know about. Or if they have, they don't really, they've never really heard of it. It's called Dissociative Identity Disorder. This is what I really see with Bucky. And here's an ex explanation of what DID is before we start picking him apart, the poor fella, poor soldier. Um, this is something that you tend to come across. It actually has other conditions. But to start off with, DID is Dissociative Identity Disorder and is usually accompanied by others such as depression, post-traumatic stress disorder, borderline personality disorder, self-harm, and anxiety. To understand what this is, you need to understand what it's characterized by. Um, what it is, is it's, uh, it's two distinct personality states. One where one can remember things, and the other where nothing is remembered at all. Two people in the same body, and it's usually defined by the inability to recall events that would be beyond regular forgetfulness. Like, uh, you go out, you forget your keys. That's that's normal. Most people forget their keys. Most people forget their phone, their wallet. This is more like when he's the Winter Soldier, and then he reverts back to Bucky Barnes. He doesn't remember those missions he did. He doesn't remember hurting people. He doesn't remember killing people. And that is what I think is his disassociative, is he doesn't want to be part of that. He hates that part of himself. He admits that he's guilty of it, that he did do these things because they do return to him in nightmares but he did do these things there that's the blood on his hands but i don't think that he wants to be that part of him he doesn't want that part of himself at all he doesn't want to associate with it no matter what so um even another example would be as uh if you pass out drunk you don't recall the events of the prior night that's kind of similar but you know, you, you still recall those events eventually. Um, so, for him, it's it's evident in Bucky because he, he can't remember his past. That's due to Hydra's brainwashing techniques before the missions, after missions. To, it was his conditioning to go on these missions to be this merciless killer. And because he can't remember his past, that really eats at him. So that even makes him even more disassociative because now he's stuck between two people. And not only that, but flashes and nightmares of the past, he doesn't recall anything. Those trigger words, those trigger words that Hydra put, like, planted into his brain. These are really, really interesting because they conditioned him that when these trigger words are said, poof, just like that, he becomes the Winter Soldier. And everything he knew in that state is gone. He can't remember that. He can't remember what he does during the Winter Soldier. So that part of him, he doesn't recall once those trigger words are said. 
Now, this is just a basic explanation of what disassociative identity disorder is, and I don't... There's, like I said, I'm not a professional, I'm not licensed, I'm not trained. So there's probably more debates out there about whether this is a real disorder or not. I don't want to get into it. This is just my opinion, because I'm nerdy like that, and this fascinates me. Um, now, the other thing is, which comes across to be really, really interesting, is now I want to move on to Bucky and the Witcher Soldier. Now, I know that just like I said, I don't know the comic book history. Um, I, I've read some of it. I've, I've heard some of it. Um, but I know Bucky was in World War II with Steve Rogers. That's not where his disassociation comes from. No, 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 no. This, this all started when he was captured by Hydra. And Hydra wanted him to be this empty shell that took orders. Just this merciless killing machine that they could tell him what he would do. And he would do it with no remorse. Now, when he was being subjected to the serum, he was tortured, wiped, and fitted with a new arm. That's when the dissociation began. That's when he started to try to fight back before he fully became the Winter Soldier. When they were conditioning him into the Winter Soldier, that's it's, it, it's like, I believe he feels that the Winter Soldier is a completely different person than himself. Because as a person, as Bucky Barnes, he would never do those things. He would never go out and kill innocent people. He would never hurt his friends. He certainly wouldn't try to children, and he certainly wouldn't want to kill Tony Stark's father. He knew the man. So for him, in order to be able to semi-live with himself, he's had to take that Winter Soldier part of him and kind of move it to a different section. Push it away, disassociate from it. The Winter Soldier is a completely different person in his body. He doesn't like that. So for him, as long as he doesn't acknowledge the Winter Soldier is not him, but another person entirely. I think he's okay with that to an extent. The Winter Soldier's dangerous. He's merciless. He's a cold-blooded killer. And Bucky as well. He used to be outgoing. He used to be fun. He used to love dancing and wooing dames, so Steve Rogers says. Uh, he knows that he'll never be that person that Steve knew before Hydra. But he also knows that he doesn't want to be the Winter Soldier. So now he can't be Steve's friend but he's not the Winter Soldier, he's somewhere between the two. And as of now, from what I can tell, that Winter Soldier's always lurking in the darkest crevices of his mind. He's always on guard around other people. Even with Steve, he's on guard. And I imagine he has every right to be the man. How's the highly trained assassin inside him? That with a few select words can be released and do Hydra spitting all over again. And I, he doesn't want that, that's why he's fighting back. Again, this is all just my personal speculation. <laughs> And aside from him wanting to separate all those heinous crimes he did himself, anything that Bucky did as the Winter Soldier, he doesn't remember. The brainwashing helped, but the memories are still there, and yet if he accidentally ends up in that state of the Winter Soldier, then he won't know what he's done until after the fact. His actions return as nightmares, and in an effort to be normal again, he disassociates that part of himself, effectively creating another Bucky. But one that holds everything he hated about Hydra in that shadow. Herein lies the problem with our Poor, poor sergeant. Bucky has effectively created two sides of a coin. With Hydra's help, of course. The Winter Soldier embodies all the hate for humanity and is a symbol of Hydra, whereas Bucky is Steve's best friend who loves dancing and wooing dames, but is since being captured by Hydra left him broken, shattered, fragmented, and lost. He no longer has that part of himself, no matter how much he wants to find it. Bucky is now stuck between two people, the man he used to be and the Winter Soldier. Being in this place, Bucky will never be able to find that peace of mind. The vibranium arm is a constant reminder of what Hydra made him into, and the face he sees in the mirror is just a shell of the man he used to be. And this really tears at him. You can tell it tears at him. And it's really sad, because he wants to be that person. He, he wants to go back. He wants to be that man from the 40s. He wants to be Steve's best friend. But he also does not want to be the Winter Soldier. People see him that way. This is the whole world sees him as this merciless killer, and he doesn't have a choice. So the only thing he can do is disassociate from the Winter Soldier and try to do the right thing, which is all the sins he committed as a Winter Soldier to try to rectify, to atone for those sins, to try to be a better person. It's not to say that he can't come back these things himself. It's just a matter of accepting that the Winter Soldier is now part of him, the other side to the coin. But he won't do that. It's, it's nearly impossible for him to accept that merciless killing side of himself, as he views it as Hydra and he wants nothing to do with that any longer. 
It's the reason why, at the end of Civil War, that he went back into cryo-freeze. Again, these are all my opinions, these aren't factual based. Uh, so that he wouldn't have to worry about hurting those he cares about, or being used as a puppet until those trigger words are taken care of. He thought of the greater good, and it's admirable that he was willing to choose to be put back into cryo-freeze, despite all of its negative connotations for him. And we can see at the end of Black Panther, oh, spoilers, 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 I, I don't know if it's a spoiler, I have no idea, it's like post credit scene. Bucky's seen in Wakanda recuperate, so maybe he's out of cryo-freeze. So it's a good chance that T'Challa was able to do something about those trigger words. And I'm really excited for Infinity War because I really want to see what's going to happen there. So now that Bucky's recuperating, maybe those trigger words are gone. Maybe he can find that peace he was hoping for. Maybe he can finally have a way to give back to the world to atone for sins. For his sins without the worry of transforming into the Winter Soldier by Hydra. Surprise Hydra! No more controlling Bucky. It's a pleasure because we can finally see him for who he wants to be. He can finally grow as a person finally choose his own path. And again, I'm really excited for uh, Infinity War because it's just it's so exciting, it's so exciting. And I do hope there are some things thrown in there between the characters such as, you know, does Tony Stark forgive Bucky for his parents' deaths? It's, that's like a really big one and I feel that Bucky won't ever want to be forgiven for such an act, even if Tony tells him that he knew it wasn't him, that he knew it was Hydra, he was Hydra's puppet. But the guilt will never abate. There's another reason why Bucky will always be in a broody type of man. The guilt of his actions as the Winter Soldier will continuously eat at him, but eventually, and I think that we see it in the post credits, you know, Black Panther, that he's healing on, on some level, he's healing. Now, this leads us straight to other stuff, uh, anxiety and post-traumatic stress disorder, because he was a soldier in a war, he was a prisoner of war, so these two things go hand in hand. And the Winter Soldier, like I said before, is part of Bucky, and Bucky's part of the Winter Soldier, and even as long as he keeps refusing to accept that part of himself, it's, it's understood why he's anxious. And it's not just the trigger words, it's just his memory is fragmented, he doesn't have much memory of his family, it's, that's why we see him in Bucharest trying to buy plums. Well, he does buy plums, he doesn't get to eat his plums. Plums are said to help restore memory. So he's buying plums, you can see in the beginning of Civil War and Bucharest that he's trying to eat these plums, he's trying to do something about himself, so trying to find who he is. So that's a start, he's taking a step forward, but it's always one step forward, two steps back. Now I think the reason why he's choosing to do this is because he, he doesn't want people to end up like him, he doesn't want other people to end up like him. And his anxiety, like you can imagine if he was in a public place, like in Bucharest he seemed a little, little less tense, but he was really, really tense in Bucharest because there was a lot of people around him. He didn't know maybe this woman next to me is a Hydra agent and with just a few quick words, he's back to being a Winter Soldier and their puppet once again. And maybe next time he's not so sure he'll be able to break out of it. Maybe next time he would kill this man, Steve Rogers, who seems to flash up in his memory quite often. So I think he, his skills as a sergeant in the army aren't always just that. I think that he's able to tap into the Winter Soldier part of himself, to use those skills for good. But again, he's never going to accept the Winter Soldier as part of himself. And I think only then, when he does that, can he actually move forward with his life. But again, one step forward and two steps back. That's the way it's always gonna be. Now, I can also imagine that the big question on Bucky's mind, if he's in a crowded place, at least before he went into cryo-freeze, said, do they know trigger words? Is this person an agent? Does this person know the trigger words? Is this person gonna radio someone who knows these trigger words? Is this person a sleeper agent? So you can imagine if he was in a public place before cryo-freeze that he would be the type of person to stay cooped up in his room if he had one of the Avengers compounds just to avoid the outside world, but that doesn't help him overcome any anxiety. And not just that, but with his memory loss, his fragmented memory, that's gonna cause a lot of anxiety because he doesn't understand who he is. All he knows is what Steve tells him, and that's in the museum, what he learned at the museum, and that's just that he's James Buchanan Barnes, sniper for the 107th Talon Commando Unit, friend to Steve Rogers, Captain America. He doesn't know much more than that. That's why he's buying plums in Bucharest. Now because of that, he also has post-traumatic stress disorder, and this is coming from him because he was prisoner of war for 70 years for Hydra. And I'm not sure if it's mentioned in the movies. I haven't really seen them recently, but I kind of remember some things. 
But he is a prisoner of war. He should be forgiven for his actions because he... That wasn't him. He's a patriot. He would never do that for anybody. He would never go out and actively assassinate someone or mercilessly kill them, especially if he knew them as a friend or knew them in life. So the fact that nobody addresses this issue, that he's a prisoner of war for 70 years, he's like the longest serving prisoner of war. Nobody addresses this issue, and it's kind of sad because he is a prisoner of war. Hydra did capture him, and he was kept behind enemy lines, and he was turned into the Winter Soldier, mainly to kill Captain America. That's that's what it was, just to kill Captain America. But that didn't work very well. They tried, they failed, and Bucky decided to stand up and fight back. And I know that Steve is only trying to get his friend back, but I don't think that Steve understands Bucky's stuck between two places. It's it's hard for Steve to see because that's Steve was also in you know cryostasis in the ocean for like seventy years. He doesn't have a tie to his past. He just has Bucky. That's his last tie. And he doesn't want that to go. So for Bucky to not know who he is and to be that confused, I think that really hurts Steve a lot. Because Steve wants his best friend back. And that's not Bucky anymore. Like I said earlier, Bucky's stuck between two worlds. Bucky Barnes from 1940s and the Winter Soldier. He's stuck between these two people. He can't decide who he is because he doesn't know who he was, but he knows he doesn't want to be the Winter Soldier. So now he's stuck. So bad for him. Okay, we're gonna move on to um, borderline personality disorder. Now, I know this has been thrown around a lot. I mean, people people know about this. I'm not so sure Bucky's bipolar. He does seem to have some hypomanic moods when he remembers things, and then he also has some depressive states, but I think he's more of a borderline personality. Uh, like I said, this was mentioned at the very beginning, and it's one of those accompanying conditions with disassociative identity disorder. And I can really see this from the little screen time of Bucky, that the instability and mood swings, the interpersonal relationships, explosive anger, fear of abandonment, chronic feelings of loneliness, and feelings of worthlessness. He... it's... it's like, um... Like, you can tell Bucky has this. He feels very lonely, he isolates himself a lot because he... he doesn't know who he is, so he isolates himself. He has this fear of abandonment. I think that's why he attaches himself to Steve so much, but then he also gets really, really angry. He has this explosive anger because Steve's trying to tell him who he was, and he, inside of him, he knows himself that that's not him anymore. So, even Bucky's trying to hold on to the person he was, but he knows he's not the same Bucky that Steve knew. Because, again, he's stuck between a rock and a hard place. He doesn't want to abandon him. He doesn't want Steve to abandon him to this scary new world that he's discovered now that he's out of, you know, the Winter Soldier mode. And I think everyone hates him and they don't understand him. I mean, honestly, honestly, I really love Bucky Barnes. I have a thing for tortured souls. I just think he needs a big old hunk. Might make him feel better. Maybe not. Who knows? But he also sees himself as worthless. He, you can tell he feels worthless. Because he knows all it takes is a few words, and he's back to being a puppet. And that makes him feel worthless, because then he can't do anything. He can't help his friend. He can't help the world. He can't fight back against Hydra with those words over his head all the time. And he's... He's really stuck in this perpetual life of being between an amnesiac with night terrors and the prospect of being Hydra's puppet again. He's the only one that has this problem. And it feel, makes him feel lonely, it makes him feel really, really angry at the world, and maybe even at himself. And probably sometimes Steve, because Steve's like, hey, you know, we were friends in the 40s, you did this, this, and this. And he knows that that's not him, because he can't remember anything. Um, let's see. Also, he's lonely because he doesn't have any more family. He doesn't remember his family, he doesn't know he has any family. And the only friend he has is Steve, and then when Sam Wilson came along, we all love that banter, Sam befriended Steve before Bucky. Well, before they found out Bucky was still alive, so they became best friends, and now, but Bucky is Steve's best friend from before Sam, so there's kind of a a clash of friendships there, and it's actually really funny to see, but I would really like to see more of that, because it's really interesting to see how that dynamic works. And there was a little bit on the screen, I remember, from what little I can't remember. I need to watch these films all over again. Let's see. But, um... I think Bucky's also really angry at Sam because Sam is a normal person. Like, everyone sees him as the Falcon, he's a hero, but 
Everyone sees Bucky as the Winter Soldier. He's a merciless killer. He's an assassin. He's evil. But he's not evil. He's not inherently evil. Bucky's a good man. He's a good person. And the society doesn't seem that way. Again, he's a really, really poor fella. Like I said, I feel really bad for him. But... As, as he was, it's like... Again, he's the longest pr serving prisoner of war. And I think... If Bucky can overcome these self-inflicting, degrading thoughts, then he'll have a chance to show the world that he's more of a knight than anything else. As broken, fragmented, shattered, and lost as he was, he still stood in the light and said, This is me. I know it's not much to go on, but that probably took a lot of bravery, courage, and valor, and maybe he just needs to be told that he's a knight. He's got the arm of one, and as far as I'm concerned, that red star is the blood of Hydra now, not the blood of Captain America. And despite, even if somebody told him these things, I don't think that he would believe it himself because he needs to accept it. He needs to accept that the Winter Soldier will always be there, even if the trigger words are gone. That part of him is always going to be there. That's not going to get erased. He's never going to forget that. But it would be nice. It would be nice if he accepted because then I think he can finally move forward with his life and there will no longer be one step forward, two steps back. Bucky will be able to choose to be who he wants to be and able to actually grow as a person and as a character. I think, I guess what I'm getting at is for him, maybe he just needs to be told that our past is, I guess, how do I say this? Um, I guess he needs to be told our past makes us who we are but it doesn't define who we become. We choose that ourselves. Maybe something like that is what he needs to be told. And maybe that will make him heal. But we don't know. But again, this is just speculation on my behalf because I'm fascinated by these things. So, this is my little rambling bit on Bucky Barnes. Like I said, he's my favorite. He's a tortured soul. He needs a big old hug to make him feel a little bit better. Maybe a pat on the back to show he's doing a good job. I have no idea if I've done a good job. As I said before, I'm not a licensed nor trained psychologist. This is just for fun, and I find these types of things fascinating, and I'm a bit of a nerd, so why not combine the two? I don't think it's been done too often. So, but again, this is just my take on Bucky, but I'd love to know what your thoughts are. I'd love to hear what you think about all this, and if it's ever crossed your mind before, I would really like to hear it. If it has, please share what you know. I mean, this is the first time that you've ever heard anything about this. Then I'd love to know what you thought on it. And don't forget, this is really fascinating stuff for me. So um, I'll, I will most likely be doing more characters. And I'm probably going to stick with the MCU for now because they seem to be the most tortured. I'm not sure why. They seem a little bit more tortured than uh, the DC people. But we'll get there eventually. But again, I chose Bucky because he's my favorite and I've analyzed him a lot. So now I'm happy I can share that with all of you. So I would really love to know what you guys think. So if you've got a suggestion of a character that you want to have a stab at, then let me know. And again, thank you for listening and hopefully I'll be back with another character that you enjoy. If you've enjoyed this one, I would really, really love to hear some comments. If you hated this, I would also like to hear some comments. I want to know how I can do better. It's always that thing. So again, thank you for listening, and these are my final thoughts. This is Bucky Barnes and his mental problems. Hopefully, we can get some clarification in the new Avengers film coming out. I would love, love to see what's going to happen there. Alright. Well, again, thank you for listening. I want to state for the record that I am not a licensed psychologist, nor am I claiming to be one. I'm just fascinated by mood, personality, and mental disorders of the world. They're not openly discussed, but as a society, we are getting there. And I really do enjoy comic book and movie characters. So instead of sitting at home and analyzing these ladies and gents myself and racking my brain over this, I thought I'd share it with the world. Let me know if I've done an okay job, a good job, or a horrible job at this because this is all new for me. And don't forget to share this podcast if you liked it. Again, thank you for listening to my ramblings, and tune in next time.